and reach. Come 
would you simply bow your heads, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we, your people, standing in this holy place, we stand here where our ancestors, oh God, had holy unctions to do something for you, and as a result of what they did, putting their minds together, oh God, here we stand in this great edifice, not as any goodness of our own, but unto you, God, be all the praise. Oh, God, you've been done a good work in your people. And I pray now that you will bind us together again in love. You will allow unity, oh, God, to take place in our families, in our community, in our church, in our ministries, for our government. Oh, God, all over the land, we lift up everything that concerns your people. And I thank you right now that you are a God who is concerned about your people. May we, oh God, never forget our past. May we today make a commitment that for God we will live and we will not die. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, whatever our lot teach us to say, that is well with our spirits. That it is well with our souls. I thank you for my brother and my sister in this house right now. I thank you that you're already at work in their lives. And I pray that the Spirit will minister to our womb today. Cause us, oh God, to hear your word and be planted in our hearts. I and mean, we rise and give your name the glory. Because you are the greatest victory. We will never be defeated. In our hearts, we are more than conquerors. We agree with your word that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for manifesting healing in this place. Thank you for manifesting deliverance in this place. May our hearts be turned over to you. And if we shout hallelujah in this place. Come on, if you believe God hears prayer, that he hears your prayer, hallelujah, that he takes your prayer and turn it into total victory. Come on, all of the building, clap your hand for your sister. Clap your hand for your sister. Because this fall that took place some years ago 
had turned into a hernia. So much so that she was lying in the bed in a, a football shape would, would come. She could see it very easily. And it also caused her intestines to go up. Amen. Do you know that there are some persons who lost their lives as a result? But today I give God praise that he called it just in time. We serve a God who can see a thing. He can reverse it.
church has access to information. We are people in high places. Amen. He's using for our good. Amen. Anything else? Something to share today? Good morning, church. Um, my name is Nicola Elkin. I stand um, with Gladys uh, Kubo. We just want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank Pastor Meadows for this opportunity and um, another picture for helping us pursue our endeavor. So we're partnering with the American Heart Association and the Cancer Society on heart health and disease prevention. Um, heart disease not only affects men, but it also affects women. Just like um, Pastor Miller um, mentioned, the Heart uh, Association has what a global initiative is called Go Red. Hence why we're wearing red and we thank um, those that have read War Red. Um, Go Red for Women is the American Heart Association global initiative to end heart disease and stroke in women. Um, launched in 2014, 2004 to close the gap of awareness um, for heart health. Um, it's expanded into a worldwide movement dedicated to removing the barriers for women that um, women facing and achieving good health and well-being. Heart disease is the number one killer for women. It's called the silent killer because there are no symptoms. You know, um, heart women um, present different from men. They usually present with heart um, indigestion, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. So we're just gonna basically highlight some things that we want you to do to promote health. Um, and can anyone say go red for me? Go red. Go red. Again? Go red. Go red. So go G is get your numbers. Um, ask your doctor to check your blood pressure. We're concerned about two numbers. That's the systolic and diastolic. Less than 120 or um, over 80 is normal blood pressure, but anything higher is elevated blood pressure. We want you to ask your doctor also for age-appropriate health screening tests. We want you to own your lifestyle, um, and that's O for the own your lifestyle. Um, I don't believe anybody in the church smokes, but if you do, you need to stop. <laughs> Lose weight, as we all need to do, exercise and eat healthy. Um, it's basically up to you. A lot of diseases are based on our lifestyle, what we eat, we don't always eat the right thing, um, and we need to exercise. Amen. It's up to you, no one can do it for you. Curtis is gonna share um, the other letter. R, R is for realize your risk. We think it won't happen to us, but heart disease kills one of three women. E, educate your family. Make healthy food choices for you and your family. And that can be simple, simple things as simple substitutions. Decrease the sugar, cut back on some of the breads. See, simple things. No one's saying to go out there and go on a diet. Just change some of our lifestyle and our um, eating habits. Amen. Teach your children or kids the importance of staying active. Limit screen time. Time to get them up and moving. And D, don't be silent. Tell every woman you know that heart disease is our number one killer. Right. One of the reasons that Nicole and I both are here is representative, as she said, of the National Black Nurses Association. Amen. And our goal is to address the disparities in our, our communities, and we will be out and on foot in the community. Um, please join us at the end of service so we can give you some um, health information and some fitness. <laughs> saying, and 
So we're going to take in and make some adjustments. Amen. You'd be surprised. Some of the slightest adjustments make a whole world of good. Amen. And so uh, take care of yourselves. Amen. Exercise. Uh, I'm looking forward right now. I don't know. I love to run throughout the city. I haven't run here yet, but if I can tell me where the course is, I'll go and explore. This is usually my season. Sometimes running just so that God, I can be a good steward over the body. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't want to continue to even come to the black church and 75, 90% of the funeral be because of health issues. Amen? Amen. 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 God has entrusted us as stewards of our bodies. One of the most important things we can do is get some sleep. Amen? Amen. 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 Get, that, get that rhythm going right again. And also, uh, uh, you know, learn how to say no. Setting some boundaries around ourselves. You don't need that cookie. You don't need that cake. Uh, I should have said that yesterday. I left the Dutch farmer's market. And I left out of there with a loaf and half of it was gone by the time. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Uh, but God be the glory. I want to ask Jamin if he would come at this time. Amen. This young man is 10 years old. He's in the fifth grade, fourth grade. Amen. And he's joined the choir, y'all. You have something that he wants to say to us today. Amen. Hey, you all right? No. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jamie. And I joined the choir a couple weeks ago, and I love it. I've been with it for a long. And if you guys want, I can teach you guys to love it too. I'm sorry, so if I can do it, I know you guys can do it too. <laughs> Give him another hand, y'all. That's how people. Amen. 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 I can do it. You can do it too. <laughs> Amen. 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 You got to uh, choir and the choirs getting ready to sing, and we do thank God for the work. Amen. That is going into uh, blessing the name of our Lord together. Amen. Let's put your hands together now. Amen. As they come. Amen. We're going to. Sing unto the Lord. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Salvation is glory.
uh, rebuild the walls. What walls? There were some walls uh, that were torn down. And whenever walls are torn down, uh, you and your people are not safe. And you're subject to uh, the ruins of society. Uh, ain't nothing going on and a lot of decay and a lot of things uh, that are, are existing today to try to kill the momentum that we as a black people uh, search so hard for. I mean, even when it comes to the house of God, uh, uh, some of you were drunk to church. You know, and some of you were told that you, you, you won't get up out of here. And don't go by and stay in the bed on Sunday in this house. Everybody, ox, ass, everybody going to the house of God. Y'all looking at me funny, but I just quoted something from the 20th chapter of Exodus. Uh -huh, where the, 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 uh, the commandments are. Thou shalt not smell that stuff. And God says everything in your house needs to go up and worship God. Don't you leave behind today that ought to be here? How are we going to advance the kingdom? And uh, we have other agendas. Uh, God is saying to us as a church, if you want to see his glory come back to the church, now is the time that we do as Nehemiah did. We go to God in prayer. And we ask God, Concerning the conditions of our hearts. Oh God, can you create in us a clean heart once again? How many of you know sometimes that this heart of ours can be deceitful? That there is nothing good in our hearts. Yeah, you might in your mind want to do good. And you say you won't serve God. Listen, there is such a, a battle out there. The enemy ain't going to allow you to do what you said you was going to do. When you make up in your mind uh, that I'm going to advance the causes of Christ. Listen here. Uh, the devil saw you when you made the decision. And he already has some acts and some enemies and some persons assigned to your life, to your marriage, to your family, to your church, to your pocketbook, to your health. To make you think otherwise. But if you truly know the word of God, you truly know what God says, you won't have a fear about what the doctor says. Oh, you, you hear what I say? You won't be uh, staying up all night worrying and complaining and talking to your Lord. I don't know how, how I got here. And, and, and I don't think the Lord loves me. Does God hear me when I pray? You know, that's how we talk. I mean, Sunday is, oh, hallelujah. He looks like, oh, I guess God. And brother, the brothers come and give you, and sisters come and give you a handkerchief in a different spirit of humility. Wait till you calm, calm your emotions down and say unto you, thus saith the Lord, if you don't change your ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to help my people get on board with what God is already at work doing. Listen here. Nehemiah gets approval from God, and then he goes to the king. King, I want to rebuild the walls. There's some walls torn down in my family's life, and I'm nudged by the reality of what I see to do something about it. Listen here. There are some people that God don't necessarily have to drug them down to get their attention. Some people make an observation and then they feel like, oh, I'm obligated to do something about what I see. It's a shame that in our community, children have to walk up and down the street with all kinds of crime in their way. It's a shame to walk down Smith Avenue and uh, every contact is 
marijuana. I'm trying to go to the deli and get me a piece of chicken. This that the other night. Have a contact. <laughs> and you know they, they changing the law, church folk. They changing the law. And listen, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not telling you what to do. As a matter of fact, uh, whatever you do, that's between you and God. You don't have to worry about this pastor driving down the street in his car because he ain't got one, first of all, right now. <laughs> Coming down your avenue to see what you're doing. That's a waste of my time. And it ain't none of my business. That's between you and God. And, you know, there are some things that God will allow with one person, but he just may not allow it with you. So we have got to have a keen sensitivity to what it is God is saying. He is talking in this place to you right now about advancing his kingdom. And that means something totally different to everybody sitting up in here. Mm -hmm. When he says something like that, he's talking to dreams that he's given you. <coughs> when he talks to you like that, it is because he recognized that you have a place along your course of destiny to make some adjustments and some alignments to the word of God so that you might become a vessel that God can trust to uphold his kingdom. Amen. Uh, how did I get here? How did he get here? Yeah, he, he let me. And he wants us to prepare. He wants us to know from, from, from this uh, crazy chapter of names that we can't even say. All throughout this chapter, and then you think the kids have names today? You think they have, they have some names? Listen, people eat steak and go to bed and wake up with a name for that child that they have. And what they do is they take a name and turn it around and start at the end and call it something totally different. And, 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 and God is saying that whatever your name is, in the kingdom of God, it means something to him. And he is wondering if we will have a Holy Ghost boldness to live up to our name. What your name is. What does it mean? Do you know the origin of your name? Yes, my name is Michiel. Michiel is a derivative of Michael. What does Michael mean, Pastor? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Michael means like unto God. Not that he is God. But his name means like unto God, which is a reminder to me uh, that while I am on this earth, uh, I'm not my own. I'm brought with a price. I can't do what I want to do. I can't go places that I want to go because God has an assignment on my life that no nobody else can perform. You sit around here and wonder and have meetings. And at the end, we get, we get so overwhelmed by who ain't here at the meeting. Listen, God ordains in every occasion, every time we come together, he ordains those who are there to be there. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Uh, so stop worrying about who ain't here. If they wanted to be here, they would be in the house. And, and I've come to understand this, that people have lives. They got three or four jobs. And they can't be at the church every time you there, Serene. They can't be there. They kill themselves. And I think one of the things that's killing us in the body of Christ is this whole notion of multitasking everything. When will we get to the point that there is just one thing that I desire? 
There's just one thing that is on my mind right now, and that thing is what God has placed there. It is the ability to do something for him so that somebody else can receive what it is that God has. Oh, that's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. I know I'm going to mess it up. But the truth of the matter is, God has placed in each and every one of you a blessing for Shanae. Uh huh. And, and, and there are all those persons who right now don't know God. But when we get finished going through uh, our evangelistic courses that are going to come, everybody is going to know what it is that they have been called to do. Because we have some walls that need to be restored in this community. There's some people's lives, listen here, who are strung out on everything from A to Z. And unless God moves in a miraculous way, there will never be healed. Unless the church rises up out of her place on Sunday morning and stop thinking that this is where it's at. No, it ain't here. God has placed in you the work of the kingdom. And when you make up in your mind that for God you live and for God you'll die, you'll get tired of your complaints and your excuses about why you can't. Why can't we uh, have two and three Bible studies going on in the church? At one time, a Bible study on Tuesday night for the adults. A, a Bible study on, on, on Friday afternoon for the seniors. For the seasoned saints who come down here and they play bingo. They eat fried chicken. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they recognize that in their coming together week after week, walking on the cane and coming on the bus and uh, coming in the caravan, and it's, it's my joy to get there. Because when I get there, I'm going to hear a word that is going to build me up. Is there anybody here today who knows that sometimes life will bring you to a, a place where not every word that you hear is what you need to keep your spirit. We need a right now word. I said, we need a right now word. What is God saying right now? I got bills that need to pay. I got sickness in my body. I've got all these things going on. And I just wonder, is there a word from God? I need to hear from him. It's a desperate time in my life. And if I don't hear from God, I'll never be able to do what he called me to do at the wall. I'll never be able to complete it. Oh, but listen, I'm so glad. I serve a faithful God. That when I'm, uh, yeah, that's the reason I'm praising right there. I said we serve a faithful God. When we are fickle in our faith, God stands back and looks at you and he looks at your responses and look at what he gave you to do. And then he looks at your spirit. He sees that that's where the problem is. Your spirit got to change. Your joy on the inside has been polluted by uh, toxic situations and toxic relationships, toxic thinking, uh, feeding your mind and telling you, oh, we ain't going to ever be able to join the church. We ain't, no, we can't build no church. We ain't, we ain't got no money. <laughs> Look at somebody said, no, you better get the money to go. Oh, no, 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 too quiet. That person is, has some stinking thinking. You don't talk like that. Come on, turn to them and say, neighbor, you need the mind of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Don't you dare allow the enemy tell you uh, how to think and how your faculties ought to rule themselves. God is at work in y'all. Listen, I'm, he brought me along as an encourager. 
from heaven to say to you, you can do the work of the kingdom. It's an important work. Here, take these three points. I'm going to take my seat. I said I was just going to. Uh, uh, I was just going to summarize. And here's your points. If you're going to advance the kingdom of God, then everyone must work together. If we're going to advance it, everybody must work together. The text said, listen to this, the merchants, rulers, daughters, temple servants, guards, priests, even bachelors were involved in the kingdom work. And the work was just not for the elite few. Uh -huh. We need to kill that devil too. Elitism is causing people to see a spirit about you. You say you're the church. And it makes them feel like they don't want to be a part of this. They got clicks so at the church too. But listen here. Uh, God can use all of us in spite of us right. to accomplish the work of the kingdom. So get rid of your big eyes and little ewes and all those things. And, and when you see people, you see them as a soul, precious unto God. No, that's not a drug addict. That is a person who is delivered. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's not a uh, 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 man running me down for money in the, in the subway yesterday, and I, I was nervous to get away from him. And the more I got uh, intense about it, the more I couldn't touch the machine like I wanted to. But God used the person that I was trying to dismiss <coughs> to help me so I could get on down the road. I'm you know, and, 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 and by, by, by right, it's our nature to you know, step back. You know, we tell them they are offensive. We push them away even as a church. How are we going to win some? We push them away. You ain't got the long dress on. Go down to the other church. Where they can come as they are. Listen, hey, God don't care nothing about how long your skirt is. He don't care nothing about how much money or what school you've been to. Are you a child of God? Are you a child of God? As long as I'm a child of God, everything is already taken. He's my father. Our oh, Father, turn to heaven, hallowed be thy name. He has called us. Tell somebody to work together. Uh huh. And the other thing, he, if we're going to do kingdom building, if we're going to restore the old way place, the old waste places, everyone works wisely. Mm -hmm. Aren't you? How many of you took in school? Took in, uh, you went to school. You took in so much information. So much information that your mind was on overload. You read so many books, spent so much money, and now the books get dust on them and you don't know what's in it. But you took it to class and you used it and you cheated on tests. Yes, just so that you could get by. Be on the road. Over the road. The truth of the matter is, uh, you gotta thank your Lord. Man. The Lord brought you through the class when you lied on the exam. Listen, I want to get to the place where I stop making all the mistakes that I made, and I decide to use wisdom in some of the things that I even get myself involved in. We don't have to be at every party. We don't have to be on every meeting. We don't have to be doing everything around the church and won't let it go so somebody else can do it. You're killing yourself. You're harboring all the business to yourself and, and you don't know what nobody to come in and help you. The work in a vacuum, that's why things happen. That's why they fall. Because you don't include, listen here, we need people on our team. We need people 
people in the church who see us on the team and will not tackle us either. Mm -hmm. Lord, we will tackle our own brothers and sisters in church. They can be in our family. They can have an anointing on their lives. And we can find the best words to hurt people right where it hurts. And then you'll wonder why. They've been here for years. Yeah, they ain't gonna roll. But people are hurt. People are, are, are dealing with depression. People are swayed to go other directions because the church ain't doing what she's been called to do. We collect a whole lot of money. We can be in church a whole lot. But we ain't been out of the evangelistical uh, 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 exploit nowhere. We've been to the mountains. We ain't even been up there to see if God has people up there that need to have the word. Does anybody come and sell this? But God wants us to do things differently, smarter, and wiser. Somebody say, help us, Holy Ghost. Yes. If we're going to build and rebuild for God, uh, you must work together. You must work wisely. And here's the other thing. You must work sacrificially. No, I see it all in the text. Ah, the, the people are building this gate and that gate and the gate around here. And uh, they have to build a wall around the gate so that the enemy won't come in and steal and destroy. You know, listen here. Let me remind you of something. I'm on my way to my seat. There are some things that the enemy ain't over with concerning you. Mm. You got away. You gave your life to Christ. Yeah, you say. But the devil still got devices you ain't experienced yet. There's some things that he knows about you that you don't know yourself. And so he comes in your life as a blind spot. And he catches you as you're in motion doing what you do, but you don't see some danger to your right. And it is those things that causes us to not be as effective as we should. But tell somebody, I'm, 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 I got to do better. I got to do better. And it may cause for me uh, to make sacrifices. Uh, uh, build the wall. Where are we going to get the money from? Yeah, we don't think that at first. But our complaints turn into negativity. And it weighs down the, the people's faith. And uh, you ain't got nothing good to say. This person ain't got nothing good to say. Is there anybody who got a word from God? Oh, whose report are you believing? His report says I'm healed. His report says I am set free. His report says that he comes to give us life. And life more abundantly. And whatever I can give uh, to him uh, to make it happen, I'll do it. Uh, I don't have uh, uh, he said we're on a chicken strike or something going on. We can't fry chickens no more. Yeah, there's a, there's a shortage of chicken. Because y'all buy it all and put it in your freezer. And hold it for two or three years. Uh-huh. I know what I'm talking about. Make sure you save those bats and chicken uh, legs too. Because... Uh, there's going to come a time when uh, things are going to just even seem like a famine. And God is looking to see, uh, have you been saving up for a rainy day? Yeah, I know you're doing the work of the kingdom. <coughs> but you don't have to get all your time down at the church. You better make that sacrifice to get to your family. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Your first ministry is your family. I know you don't like it. I know you love the pastor more than you love God. But every time the pastor calls you, you don't have to say yes. Think about your family. You all, we're always down in the church. And our children are down the street, around the corner, in the presence of somebody else. 
who have spirit on them uh, to change the course and the destiny of your children. And you spend all your time down in the church. <coughs> sweep around your own backyard. Before you try to sweep around mine. You can't come tell them preaching to me about my house when everybody in your house running you. Uh-huh. You're supposed to be the priest of the house, the, the mother of the house, the one who has prayer. <coughs> Supposed to be holding up the bloodstained banner for the Lord, but you are part of another kind of army. That army is part of the kingdom of darkness. And that spirit is up in the church. And if the church don't change, the world will be saved. I said, let me say it like they said when I was growing up, you're going to hell. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm not saying sending you there, but I'm saying to you that when we don't do things God's way, we'll always have ailments and things in the earth uh, because the earth is groaning for the sons of God. Where are they? They got the name on the roll, but they ain't been changed yet. They always read the word and know what to say out of their mouths, but don't allow the spirit into their own lives to build up their temple for the usage of God's kingdom. I believe here today in this house there is somebody who is saying I am tired of church as usual. Yes. Meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. Come talk about this meeting behind the other Get over to this sidebar. Hear what they say. Spirit of gossip, get on you. Come on back over this side. Church is full of dizzy people. Yeah. And if we don't destroy that devil, yes, the church will fall. It will fall. As long as I don't line up. With the precept that I just read, thou shalt not commit so I thought that ain't for me, that's supposed to let me. <laughs> no, so when you want to read it, you read. And when you read, God holds you accountable to what you have been exposed to. Every time you open the word, Miss Pam, transformation is happening. Yeah. Because your, your life is nothing but darkness. But when you open the word of God, the word of God is a light to your feet. The word of God is a lamp to your path. Listen here. We serve a God who can keep you from making mistakes. We serve a God who can take the taste out of your mouth. We serve a God who is in the business of delivering his people. So that they might be persons standing on the wall. I got this. I got my stuff together. God is doing a great work in my life. And I participated with him. And I made the adjustments that he said to my GL. And as I make the adjustments in my own life, God prepares me to be of assistance to somebody else. I take care of my own stuff. He gives me the spiritual muscles to be able to go down and stand with somebody else whose life is ruined. Something about their existence makes you cry. And makes you begin also to rejoice because when you see them, you saw you. Uh-huh. If you're here today and you know that God has restored your life, I beg you to stand and give unto praise. If you know that God ain't through with you yet, if you know that God is still in the blessing business, this 
listen here, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, the fact that you're still here is a living testimony. You should have been lost. Oh, but listen here. There's this man, his name is Jesus. Jesus is our greatest example. For he came just as Nehemiah did. He saw the situation and Nehemiah was a Jesus type. Uh, he was a prototype for what it was Jesus was going to do. What was he going to do? Jesus left his home in glory. And he came to this earth. And he stooped way down to find somebody like you. Uh, aren't you glad that he found you? Aren't you glad that he didn't leave you where he found you? God saw you and he called you by name. And when you look, your hands went up. Because spirit of uh, uh, surrender came over you. The Holy Spirit was working on you and calling your name and you thought you were calling out to God, but God was calling out to you. And your heart heard him. And before you knew it, something about you went running to the altar saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Say anybody today glad that he heard you when he said, save me. Lord, save me. Not just for myself, but save me for the express purpose of building up his kingdom. Not necessarily these four walls, but the kingdom of God that rests in you. It rests in you. You have the keys to the kingdom. You have the keys. Where are your keys? Where are your keys? Where's your faith? Where's your hope? Where's your joy? Where is a Holy Spirit in your life? God is saying to the church, my spirit lacks your attention. You need it. 
example, God, we can use me. God, you need an example. I'm a volunteer myself. Awakening, a, a spiritual awakening for Poughkeepsie, for Highland. 
Amen. We thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your presence here today. This is the Metropolitan Amy Young Church. Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Don't ever let it be said 
And someone said to me about Smith, is that true you did in business? Just last week, I said the devil is a lie. Yes, it is. You're not there, so you don't know. We make an observation because you don't see people, but this the church is a viable institution in the community. And if we just come on Sunday morning, you see, we come and get in the car and can't find the church when we don't need. But we're going to do that because we're going to help you and put your vision out there. Get a mind to work. Get a mind to work. We have not because we work not. Let the church say amen. Church say amen. Church say amen. Yeah. 